love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Hilla, what's good? What's good? What's good? Good, how are you? Everything all right? Yeah. yeah. They locked the champ up. <laughs> nah, that was, nice that was a nice line. That was a nice line. They nah, locked I, the champ I, up. I know. I thought, I thought somebody got locked up. I know I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> I can say whoever champion out there. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, Stat? How was the draft? Guys, the draft was great. First of all, um, this is like my first real like New York experience because I, I went once when I was a lot younger. Um, so it's like I feel like I went, you know, as much places as I could in the last couple of days, went to Brooklyn. Queens, obviously Manhattan, but I haven't been to Harlem yet. <laughs> I'm supposed to get food there, but we'll see. Like, we'll see. But how you the go to New York? Whole is and, great. How you go to New York and go everywhere besides Harlem? Stat crazy, right? I know. I have to go. Like that's like the last stop. I'm like, guys, like what? we're running out of time. What do I do? So I got to figure it out. But yeah. It's been a it's been a great time. And then we're definitely gonna discuss the draft, you know, because we have to, but as far as the New York aspect, yeah, (laughs) y'all. Who did your makeup, (laughs) Stat? Right. I don't if y'all know, I don't do crazy makeup. Um shout out to Makeup by Fatima because she did her thing. Um, that's when I was in the Bronx. So yeah, yeah, she did my makeup. I could tell you it was in New York. Your eyes are smoked on the top. (laughs) <laughs> not the New York he said you've got a New York <laughs> makeup artist I'm dead <laughs> yeah <y'all. laughs> it's like when you get to New York and people can really cut hair and they don't be putting all the black on your hairline you know you're in New York because they know what they're doing not that other places don't but it's a yeah. certain you just know that that's New York right Definitely, definitely. So yeah, shout out to her. But New York has been treating me well. So let's get into the draft. Are you wearing a Raiders hat first and foremost? I'm okay. from Vegas now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. If I had to, I'd peep that. And I was like, wait, that, that did not go unseen. Okay. So let's get into the draft. The WNBA draft happened last night, and Caitlin Clark was selected first overall by the Indiana Fever, followed by Cameron Brink to the LA Sparks, then Camilla Cardoso to the Chicago Sky. In general, what's you guys' overall thoughts on the draft? Are you shocked by anybody's, you know, draft number? What did you guys think as a whole about the whole thing? Me personally, I'm not surprised. I think it all went exactly the way it was supposed to go i would have only I, i'm not gonna lie i wouldn't have been surprised if they would have picked um cameron brink first but they picked the second she's been a, a great star in um stanford for a long time you know there's even clips of her playing with um or being mentored by stephen curry and stuff like that so you know, when you think of L.A., L.A. got to get a, a franchise player, and she will be a franchise player. Um, Caitlin Clark going to to Indiana is is another is another thing none of us are surprised about. Like um, Cam said the other day that, you know, these – I think it was just yesterday that they bought all this TV time for Caitlin Clark. They know this is who the world want to see, and they want to see if her actual talent – is going to translate, or is Diana Taurasi got a point that, you know, she's going to run into a reality check. 
but that's going to be a lot of reality. That's all I was thinking when he said all the time that she's going to be on TV. But I don't think it's going to be a reality check. I think it's going to be a reality check for them. So as much as I, I love um, Tarasi and Bird, they're like my first people that made me start watching college basketball for girls. Um, I think on this, she's going to shock the world. Or at least shock the naysayers. And um, Angel Reese and everybody else, they I think they went to the teams they were supposed to go to. What do you think, Killer? I don't see any surprises. You say when you first start this, you wouldn't have been surprised if Cameron Brink went first. That's what you said. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't have been surprised. Man, she bugging. You smoking? You, I don't know what you smoking, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? You was everybody knows. I mean, you could have been on Mars and knew who was going first. Now I would have yes. been surprised if Cameron Brink went first. I would have I would have been bugging. Would you like to know why I wouldn't have been surprised? No, go ahead. I, I'm listening. Go ahead. I want to I want to hear this. So I would like to hear this myself. I would like to hear this. Yeah, I would like to hear why you wouldn't you know, have been surprised. Maybe they took a page out of the NBA um um playbook. You know how sometimes when a person really wants the other person, they put all of the, the favoritism on the first person so people cannot be looking at the one that they want to get and make them pick the one that they wanted to get. So they get, I mean, make them pick the one they didn't want to get so they actually get the one they wanted to get. <laughs> I know it sounds yeah, like spinning, revolving. but sometimes yeah, people you are do definitely that. spinning right yeah. now, bro. You know, you're wild. <laughs> I forgot what draft it was that that happened, that everybody was like, oh, they're going to get this person. And that person didn't even get picked for a while. And everybody was like, so why did they say that? They said that so they can make sure they get the person they wanted. But, you know. That, that, that ain't you know. the case for this, bro. I know I know what you mean. And nobody, we, we talked about this briefly yesterday. <laughs> Indiana would have fucked up all type of business for themselves. If they picked anybody else, the niggas got thirty six nasty ton of odds games. It ain't cause of Cameron Brink. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't because of her. But what I will say is, I just wanted to see where you was going with that. That's why I had to ask you real quick. Yeah, but, they couldn't. If they would have picked Cameron Brink, could they have take the TV spots back? No, they would have still had the spot. We we don't know what the contract said. The contract could have been based upon with a small fine print and said. Based on <laughs> Caitlin Clark coming in. Let me ask that. Snap, was you surprised? <laughs> would, you, would you have been surprised if they took Cameron Brink first? Would you have been I, surprised? I would have been very surprised. Cameron Brink is a phenomenal player, but the, the fix was in for Caitlin Clark to be one. So. It, was, it was super fixed. The whole <laughs> shit was around her. They giving her a speech before the whole shit popped off. Like a 15, 20 minute speech. I'm like, me personally, I was like, this ain't even fair. I mean, everybody knew she was going first, but it was like a whole 15, 20 minute segment towards her before the right before the draft even started, the pre draft the pre draft show. And I'm like, damn, I never seen an obvious number one so bad in my life. And no matter if it was the NBA either, I know it's a lot of times we watch murder growing up and you'd be like, he going number one. And I know what you're talking about too. And when niggas act like they getting somebody just to throw niggas off, but I ain't see this clear cut number one, like since probably Zion or LeBron, where you just absolutely knew no matter what we're taking this person. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you. I know more about college women's basketball than the WNBA, but I'm going to, catch up this season. And, you know, I've been watching a little bit the last um, two seasons, mainly because we've been on the West Coast, and so I'm not going to lie, we've been able to see the Aces success. And not only that, the Aces played the Liberty last year of New York. So that was like a big deal to watch both teams play for me. But as far as where everybody else went, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know um, a, a lot about the franchises, but, you know, that's one thing about a phenomenal player or players in this draft that it'll make you start paying attention. I can't wait to start catching up. But I will say this before I end what I say. Congratulations to everybody who got drafted last night. Um, look forward to seeing you guys play. But 
white girls running this shit right now, man. One and two. <laughs> One and two, man. <laughs> um, that's, that's just that. <laughs> that's just that. They run this drink right now. <laughs> so forever notice. <laughs> I don't know what y'all going to do, but the one and two wit, one and two pick, yeah. you know, white America, baby, they, they found something. They found something. <laughs> they found something, man. Uh, congratulations to everybody. <laughs> so the women's movement is even going to be, <laughs> going to be forerun by, by um young white girls. What I'm saying is this murder, like on some G shit, like we talked about it, and I know you probably ain't thinking about it the time that I said it, but you know basketball just as good as me, if not better, maybe. But at the end of the day, look, this is good home American cooking, men yeah. or women. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good old American pie right here, man. That whole pie right here. <laughs> yeah. I know y'all don't like chocolate chips, but this is apple pie. Y'all gonna have to wait with them chocolate chips. This is yeah, apple this is pie. Good, this is good old American apple pie. Niggas have not had superstars like this since Larry Bird. I'm telling you, it means something when it's uh, when it for, for white people. I'm telling you, I, and I'm not saying it's on racial. I know because I know white people, you know, and and it's not that they're racist or race or whatever. You sometimes you root for your own and. It's just been no big American basketball star that's from America that's white since Larry Bird. I'm not saying there haven't been white NBA players or white WNBA players um, in the past, but a superstar of this magnitude haven't been here since Larry Bird. So to get, think about that, the first two picks on, on uh, the WNBA is white. When's the last time my first two picks was white people in the in the NBA? Let's just be real. I don't know. I'm asking you, Max. I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> the, that's the first that's been a long time. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that probably was back then. <laughs> probably pissed stupid and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Larry ain't even go number one, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was before then. It was yeah. definitely the good old boy years now. Yeah, man. So um, I like to see it, man. You know, I'm just gonna call it like I see it. I'm not against it. I'm with it. You know what y'all know? What you know what we gotta do out there. Y'all know what's going on. But I love the, to see it, man. Is the ice colder when it's white? I always wanted to ask that. <laughs> I think is white I, ice colder. I don't know. That's a good question, man. <laughs> I know, I know. Caitlin Clark is cold, baby. <laughs> ice cold. Andre three thousand. Ice cold, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't touching this conversation. I don't care, man. See, that's the thing about it, and that's the thing about it. I'm gonna say what's with. I'm not lying. What I'm lying about? He's not lying. Stop <laughs> yeah. when he start lying. He is not lying. I'm not lying. This is the fact right here, man. So, now but like we, I said, now all we need is a is a um a all white team like Fab Five, all freshmen next year. Somebody got to be nice. putting that together. It really. Man, I, be I, in the whole yeah, team, NBA. I'm at WNBA from the first year. Yeah, that's gonna be a minute. I think Doris Stanley and them had a lot to say about that. You know, they they got a little crew over there. Girl. Camilla Cardoza, she probably the only one that's really of that much importance that's leaving the team. And don't I'm not gonna sit there and cut six seven. You know, she's six seven. I ain't gonna act like that ain't a big deal. That's yeah. some, that's a big deal, but uh, that's probably the most per that's probably the person I was most happy for in the draft was um was her was Camilla because um you know I, I heard her story during the season and for her to come over here just to take a chance to play basketball and didn't even speak English when she came over here you know that's a big jump. Um, coming from Brazil, so I give her a lot of credit for even taking a chance because 
a lot of times we take for granted, and don't get me wrong, it's money over here and it's opportunity in America I'm talking about. So people mm-hmm. take the chance, but imagine if, if the shoe is on the other foot to where, and I'm just using any country, you know, and it's not disrespect to anything. It's like, you know, if you're a basketball player at 15 and somebody tells you, yo, man, I'm telling you, if you go to, if you go to, to Turkey, that's what's going to happen for you. Like, I don't speak Turkey, nigga. Fuck yeah. you out there. It's a big jump. So I give a lot of these players, and then I know it's a shitload of money, not just, especially her, because she took a chance in high school before you even get to college. A lot of people get over in the NBA and the money's already waiting. He didn't have a guaranteed check waiting for us. So um, congratulations to her. That was probably my favorite person to see get drafted last night. Yeah, shout out to her for getting drafted that early. But I'm I'm gonna ask you a question, Cam. Mm-hmm. At six seven, as a as a, a young lady in Brazil, what else was she gonna do in Brazil? It wasn't that much. Of it, 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 I'm just saying, it's like here you go being a male chauvinist again because you saying if you don't, if you six seven <laughs> in Brazil, you can't do nothing else. <laughs> That's what you say. <laughs> Brazil is super dangerous. What else you was Brazil is dangerous. Brazil yeah, it's, is dangerous. it's super Brazil, dangerous. Yo. Brazil is a lot of people don't know that Brazil <laughs> is fucking dangerous, yo. <laughs> yeah, like what else she was going to do in Brazil? Yo, but but murder, you think you think that's the only thing in danger in Brazil? <laughs> Like that's that's what make the city go around. He's dead. He's dead. You never been in Brazil. I've yeah. I've heard of Brazil, but like, and I know that there's violent crimes there, but yeah. Yeah, that this was a this was an angel whoever told her to come to to America because it's not it wasn't much gonna be there for him. How do you know that Mace? How do you know what's going on for somebody <laughs> six brothers in Brazil? How do you know it's that? Like, yeah, it's just like the guy who you said was was seven feet standing in front of the projects. It is not <laughs> like if there's any trouble out there, he's gonna be able to get away with it. He's gonna stand out like a sore thumb. Pause. So he his best bet was to take that draft. So it's only criminals. Practice. So it's only criminals in Brazil. Mm-hmm. All you keep talking about. She all I know, all I know about Brazil is 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 like, um, you know when they say the um, what they call it, the dark web. <laughs> That's the, one of the best places for the dark web, you know. So. She did right by coming out of Brazil. I'm not saying she couldn't have been anything, but it wasn't as much risk as you talking about. <laughs> she, she, it was a win-win Brazil. either way. It was a win for them and a win for her. You don't have yeah, to be. No, a- listen, I, I, and I'm not knocking what you're saying, but I'm I'm just not gonna sit here <laughs> and, and tell our audience this is me saying it's nothing to do but crime <laughs> in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I ain't got, I ain't got nothing to I'm do with that. I'm saying Brazil, sure. Brazil is a beautiful <laughs> place for fun, you know? I mean, but if you talk Mace, about... It got to have a government. It got to have a city council. It got to have a downtown. It got to... Like, you just land to get a gun and go to work? I'm just trying to figure out exactly what you not, mean by that. You're <laughs> like, not letting me finish. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Guy. There's a downtown. There's a downtown, but she's too tall for the downtown in Brazil. It, she wouldn't have even looked right down there. It's not like the buildings are like New York, you know. It's it's South America. You know what I'm saying? A six seven woman in South America. Is that none of the 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 um most of the men are not that tall. So if she's six seven. Being over here is her best life, you know. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's it's not crime infested. It is crime infested, but this was her best opportunity. It wasn't as much risk. I didn't agree that it was as much risk as Cam was saying. 
Not that everybody is criminal prostitutes. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like to me. Drug dealers. Yeah, just, that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like that's exactly what you're saying. And, and listen, that's not what I'm saying. It sounds, it sounds like it. I'm just saying it. It sounds like she had no other chance in the world but to get here. She didn't get here. It was over no, for her. That's saying, what it sounds like. No, I'm saying this was her best shot. This was her best shot, and I'm happy for her, that she made the right decision, unlike the guy who chose to stand in front of the project, says seven feet. But but what I'm saying is this, murder. That nigga don't want to do nothing. He posted that clip, too. Shout out to my nigga, Bear. <laughs> my nigga Doe, he posted that clip we put up the other day too and, and, and put LOL under his caption. But hey, man, I'm not knocking your opinion. That's just not my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying this though. Because so if, talk 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 about, about, if I was talking yeah. about Bear and I said, you know, I'm glad he took the risk, I'm basically saying it wasn't no risk for him being seven feet. It's fine with me, man. You talk about. It's not a problem with me. When the, when the Brazilians run down at you in the airport, you tell people keep running down on you and they give you a lecture about <laughs> what the, what's the possibilities in Brazil. Or you, sit, or you happen to just sit next to somebody from Brazil and they want to lecture you the whole flight because you think everything is City of Gods. A lot of people when they see the movie City of Gods, that was in Brazil. <laughs> And I'm That's not gonna say it. <laughs> yeah, you sit here thinking about City of God. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking there. about Fast and the Furious yeah. and all. Yeah. And you snatch your cousin and yeah. all. Yeah. You, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I know it is. I know it is a lot of crime, but I'm not. That's nice, y'all. Because if you see me, I know it's other things to do out there, so you don't have to. Stuff to me about it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure she could have been working in the. In, she is smart enough to work in the city council if she wanted. Yeah, to. and and we wish you all the best. We wish you all the best, and and pray that she does very well. But what I will say is this: Mace, when she gave her speech uh, after she got uh, drafted, she said she came here to give her family a better life. She definitely said that. I can't make this up. That I'm just sorry. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not jacking this that he on his own. He's gonna see somebody Brazilian. It's the it's almost Olympics time too. Go ahead, you gonna bump into somebody. Um, I will add since I was there. Yeah, that speech was very emotional for her. And to me, what was surprising is that she actually ended up going third overall, which wasn't even you know projected in the mock draft. So now she got drafted to the Chicago Sky and she'll be playing with Angel Reese, which to me is very interesting. Because I don't know if you guys remember from the SEC tournament when we saw- about Kim to fight. Yeah, and Flage. But the funny thing about it was Angel Reese was the person who did not participate in that at all she actually sat on the bench and didn't do anything which now we see that was one of the best decisions because imagine if she would have swung or did something that would have been crazy yeah, yeah and yeah. stat stat to further indicate my point right she got the mic and said she was there to give her family a better life so that means there wasn't a lot of risk it was a blessing <laughs> Yo, Stat. Stat, you hear an echo? Didn't I just say that? OJ is in heaven saying, I got a grasp on the obvious. Yeah, you got a grasp on the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard OJ. Uh, yeah, but, but as far as how Angel Reese, um, We'll see. We'll see what happens. Like I said, I'm not going to say and act like I know about, you know, last thing I knew about um, Chicago is I used to love uh, Elena Deladova, if I'm pronouncing her name right. She was super nice, man. I think she was, she kept getting hurt a lot during her career, but I was a big fan of hers. I'm not sure, and people will kill me if it isn't the Chicago 
um, team that she played for, but I thought it was Chicago. And injuries messed up, but she was really, really good white girl as well. She was nice. And then another player I did want to bring up because there's there's a lot going on. Like in front of me was um Kim Mulkey, Don Staley, and then on stage was Gino. Behind me there was Paige Beckers. Like there was a lot. It was it was it was a stacked crowd. But what was super Super cool is behind me was Kate Martin. She plays at Iowa with Caitlin Clark, or I can say used to. She wasn't even expected to get drafted, right? She went to go support Caitlin Clark out of nowhere. You know, cameras pull up and they're like, oh, you might have to move a seat. So we're looking like, what? Like, what she got to move a seat for? All of a sudden, you know, the next round, she gets drafted. Shout out to the Aces. She gets drafted to the Aces. So that was a cool opportunity to see as well, because I think it was a lot of like uncertainty. Like we kind of knew a little bit of the draft board for the first round, but as the second and third round came across, it's like, we didn't know exactly what would happen. So to see Caitlin's teammate get drafted and not even knowing just after supporting her friend was also super dope to see. So it was a night full of surprises for some people, which was super dope. Yeah. But That's one thing good, I- Kate. Yes, that- huh? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no. You, no, you can make your point because I was going to move along, but I want to hear what you had to say. That's how good Caitlin Clark is, just come along for the trip. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you might, yo, get on the flight. You never know. Fucking with me, you never know. <laughs> That's how yeah, they feeling shit. me. They feeling me. They like yeah. on me. You want to yeah, be? Like, yeah. yeah. No, what I'm saying is when you Caitlin Clark friend. I'm trying to say murder. If you you know pause you you if you in Caitlin Clark situation, you like Keller. Just get on the flight. Give it. All. I'm telling you, come with me. It shit might work out your way. I'm telling. you. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I ain't got nothing else to do. I'll fucking roll out, see how I go and get drafted. It's crazy. Congratulations to her as well. Yeah. So shout out to her and we'll see her in Vegas. So speaking of Caitlin Clark, a big conversation right now is her salary is expected to be $338,056 over the four years that she's supposed to be with Indiana, right? So is this price point shocking to you guys? What do you guys think about what her expected salary is supposed to be? How much again? Three hundred and thirty-eight thousand over four years. Three hundred, like per year, or ninety. That's gonna be around ninety thousand a year. Nah, a she can go to the big three. She gotta go to the big three. Tell them niggas, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be there for some games. I don't know. This is this is too crazy. I don't know if I'll be able to turn down five million for eighty. That's sad. Who owned the Indi- who owned the Indiana on um, FIBA? We might need a team. If it because for real, if you they gotta pay them girls more than that. They gotta pay them what more. It, what, it, what it probably is is that it's a salary cap like the NBA. You can only make but so much per year. Um, you know, to try and keep com- competi- competition. Leveled. It isn't baseball is the only sport with no salary cap. You could just pay everybody two billion dollars. Um, so it's probably the salary cap. But yeah, Mary Mother, I got ninety thousand in my pocket right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's what I was thinking. <laughs> like yo, <laughs> yeah, I got a book. I could pay for four players right now. <laughs> yeah, like we got to figure out how to get these females some more money because. Uh, they're talented. They're putting in the work. Obviously, they're becoming an attraction. But uh, I was doing my homework throughout the season. Next year is a big deal, depending on these ratings, how it goes this season for the WNBA. Uh, their TV deal is up. So if they get the viewers this year and uh, Caitlin Clark brings as much excitement to the WNBA as she did the college basketball for women, then that renegotiation is crazy. Because we got to think about this. It's a salary cap. But, you know, this is probably the third, fourth time bringing up, but how much do the Indiana Pacers get, the Pacers, Indiana Fever get for the TV deals? See, Kobe opened up that can of worms years ago, and that's why the salary cap keeps going up and up and up for players in the NBA to where we're seeing a Jalen Brown getting a $325 million contract. Yeah. Or when we see Giannis get 290, you know, every year is going up. Like 
And pardon me, I said I said Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, pardon me, three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar contract. And when Jason Tatum's contract comes up, it's going to be even higher because when Kobe, what Kobe did was make the Players Association realize, hold the fuck on, we not getting none of this TV money because it was a year when Kobe was asked to take less money. And he yeah. said, I'm absolutely not going to take less money because they wanted him to take less money to get be- better players on the Lakers. And I don't know, let's say the salary cap around that time. I know it's raised since then. I think it was $58 million, something around there. And Kobe was taking like close to 30. So they were saying, Kobe, we only got about 25, 30 million left to get good players. He said, well, figure it out. Y'all just did a $3 billion TV deal. Where that money at? So I won't take less money because if you're doing a TV deal and I'm the one they turning on the TV to watch, why would I take less money? And they got hip to that. And ever since then, the salary cap for the men has been going up year after year after year. And we'll see what happens with the Raiders this year. And hopefully they'll get a better deal when their contract is up. The WNBA I'm talking about. And females can make some more money. But She'll make a shitload of money on on um endorsements and so on and so forth. It's like Michael Jordan. And I think it's a fucking crime, personally, that that man made $111 million his whole career. And, you know, Scottie yeah. Pippen made more than Michael Jordan in his NBA career now. Of course, we're going to buy the Jordans, the sneakers, and that's what made him you know, he's still probably the best sneaker seller ever, at least from an athlete's point of view. If I'm wrong, maybe somebody from soccer from overseas, I don't know about it, but in America, no. <laughs> pardon me, the run that Michael Jordan is on since 1984-85, whatever year it was, has just been amazing. But uh, shit, for a nigga to only make $111 million his whole career, then you got people like, Jalen Brown, who just made 325 for five years, it's like, God damn, man. I know the economy changed, it's growth, et cetera, et cetera. But what if Mike ain't had the sneakers? It would have been an outright travesty. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I know they just paid the young boy out there in Phoenix $70 million for four years. Mike made 111 So it's a, it's a whole different time. And and it's just it it goes to that point that sometimes you don't get paid here, but you get paid much much greater as something else. So I think he I think he it worked out for him with with the running sneakers I have. You know, here we are in two thousand twenty four, and I think those sneakers came out in eighty four. It's crazy. That mean that's yeah, absolutely. forty years strong, yeah, absolutely. no decline. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. It it would just piss me off, I'm just saying, given a scenario. Yeah. If, if I'm just giving a scenario, if we, and like I said, I never considered this work, but I'm just saying, if we had to come here for free, and I ain't going <laughs> to say for free, to make some money somewhere else. <laughs> like, I got to come here, because if I don't come here, I won't make money over there, but I'm not making money over here. That shit is crazy. Let me uh-huh. keep let me keep coming over here <laughs> with Mason Stack and don't make no money so that I can make money over there. But if I don't do this, I won't make that. I don't think that's yeah. Right. That's the that's the that's the Jedi mind trick that they've been running on niggas for ages. Well, you know, right here, this is just your promotion. You really go yeah, yeah. and you get over <laughs> here. This is just yeah. a stop. Stone, this is getting your feet wet. Yeah, nah, and nigga, they, I need to get paid while my feet are getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never told the story. That's how I got the name M A Dollar Sign. Nigga, Kuda would say, Yo, mate, I mean, this is just to get your feet wet, nigga. When you get your foot wet, nigga. You know how much money you looking at? I said, dude, I understand. Niggas is getting their feet wet, but I need to get paid now. <laughs> Tomorrow yeah. ain't promised. We need to get paid now while our feet getting wet. He said, yo, you want to get paid for everything. 
I said, brother, if it's not, listen, if it's charity, somebody's getting paid. Yeah, and 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 a lot of times young artists may not even understand what you're talking about because they have technology that we didn't have. And just to yeah. be clear for our audience, what Mace is trying to say, you know, I know what he's saying, and you might not know what he's saying, but I'm just going to give you an example of what he's saying. Now, if you're a new artist, you have the internet, you have social media, you have different outlets to where you can be you can be a TikTok star, niggas want to book you for a show. Or yeah. you have a hit on the internet, niggas want to book you for a show, so you get paid immediately. Before these tools were effect, in effect, I'm talking about social media, the internet, anything yeah. else, what record companies used to do is tell you, we're going to put you on the road so that people get to know you. So you're going to do... 20, 30 shows for free. You, you'll get money to eat in a hotel room, but you will really be going to do shows for free and it's called a promotional tour. Yeah. So so you'll yeah. sit there and be like, and when you're young, you know, at that time it's different. Like I said, it's different. When you're younger, you sit there and be like, when you get back home, you're like, yeah, I just came back from Texas. I was in Brazil. I was in Honolulu, you know, Portland. Nigga say, <laughs> Yo, let me hold five dollars to the check clear though. You just came from everywhere, but you still gotta borrow money to get something yeah. to eat. So that's what Mace is referring to. Mace is saying when he first and, and, and that situation was a little different too as well, Mace. I know that that you had to do a promotional tour, but uh you kind of just stepped in, and I'm not gonna say step because I seen, you know, we was part of the grind. I'm talking about. Yeah. Your first introduction to the world, it was kind of like overnight for certain people because you just jumped on a 112 song with Biggie and 112 and probably shined more than everybody on the song. So it was kind of immediate for you. Your promotional tour wasn't the average pro promotional tour for the rest <laughs> of us. <laughs> nah, but it was. Yeah. So, all I was getting was put diem. I was only getting yeah. put diem. I was headlining and getting put them killer, remember? That's how niggas, niggas would be mad at me. They're like, yo, this nigga Mason sharing the money. I'm like, nigga, I didn't get paid yet. They telling me I gotta get my feet wet. Oh, this, okay. is what, yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say. You you talking about Brazil. Imagine you get off this stage. It's a it's it's a twenty thousand people there. It's how much you got. Oh, we get fifty dollars a day for food. Yeah. I dig it. I, 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 a day for food. I came home, nigga said, yo, you was the headliner. I said, what's the headliner? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. the nigga going last. How yeah, much I you Oh, we getting like 150? Nigga said, 150,000, that's what's up. I said, no, $150 a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nigga said, yeah. He's yeah. wondering why I'm why I'm the way I am. I gotta get paid. <laughs> ain't no way around it. Yeah, and I, I, dig I it. turn on the TV and Killer got a pink mink on. I'm saying these niggas is getting paid. Yeah, but we had to we had to fight for that, and literally. <laughs> yeah, because we turning my TV on. I say, yo, these yeah. niggas is that pink furs. What's nah, going on? Now that was after two albums, I realized I was getting jerked though. <laughs> then I said, <laughs> then then that and that's that was after, the pink. A lot of people don't know. See, the pink make is out on the third third album. <laughs> like that 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 wasn't out the gate. That that's when pink mink was all because of. And I'm not proud to say this, and I'm not bra bragging and uh or saying anything like this. Uh, but the pink mink came more virus. <laughs> when they start... <laughs> so they had you getting your feet wet too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my feet was getting wet for three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. Kim is saying, we didn't have the internet, so there was nobody there to tell you you getting beat. You getting beat. Yeah. You didn't know you was getting beat. Pause. Yeah, you know? yeah. that's a fact. That's a fact. You had no way to figure <laughs> out what except with your life. Yeah. And it took, to be honest with you, 
it took a mole and Epic Records that fuck with me and told me <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> they can say, yo, home, homegirl liked me. She was cool. She said, yo, I just want to let you know they ain't spent no money in your marketing, but you got a marketing budget of 200000 They spent 7500 but the head of marketing got the new Benz and just came back from vacation. <laughs> What? I don't know that all of a sudden 30,000 missing out your marketing budget. This, that's just me. I don't know. You don't know. Hold on. What you talking about? <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. You just like, yeah, you just happy to be have a record deal in the beginning. Yeah, shout out to um, shout out to her and shout out to Song You Know with Brandy Moms. She was the one put me on to game. She said, How much you got paid? I told her how much I got paid. She said, No way. I need to see that paperwork. I said, I don't even know what, what's the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know see, people, yeah, because <laughs> when people don't realize this makes us that. It's, and, and I be looking at shit and I be like, damn, I wish I had the technology niggas had. I probably have two billion right now. Yeah. But at the end of the day, to get a record deal wasn't just like go get a record deal. Like how right yeah. now you don't even probably need one with distro kids and tune core. And all that other shit. But to get a record deal, that shit was like hitting the lotto. It wasn't guaranteed to happen. So, yeah, man, you know, just different times, man. Well, well, those are some dope stories. And I definitely think the younger generation takes a lot of things for granted because a lot of things are accessible. So thank you all both for sharing that. Super dope. Um, We're going to go to break. Real quick. Yeah. You know how to tell time with a hand, with a clock with hands? Yeah. Oh, all right. Just check. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? There's a lot of people your age don't. They don't. <laughs> you know, I, learned it. I learned that in school, too. Uh, yeah, that's and what I'm when saying. When y'all got me the watch, I had to know how to tell time. That would be crazy. I don't know. They did a they did a joint where they was asking college kids what's this, showing them different shit. They know what a beeper was. They know what a quarter to three was on a clock. And these was college students. So I was just wondering if you knew that. Yeah, I know a little something. Not everything, but I know a little bit of things. You ain't know a rotary phone. That's why I asked. So I was just wondering. <laughs> Yeah. You didn't know what a rotary was. I'm like assuming it's the thing with the dial, but like I never see, I never seen one of those. I never. Sorry, nah, y'all. A, nah, <laughs> don't apologize. It's all good. <laughs> okay, it, y'all. Yo, gonna... send one of murder send one of them people to be like, yeah, when electricity go out, <laughs> nobody <laughs> <laughs> you can't use your phone. <laughs> I said, I said, sin. when is the electricity going out? Oh, you don't remember the blackout in 01? Yeah. The, the blackout in 01? Yo, my nigga. Yeah, he w- w- had, nigga. Get, yeah, they get the door locked that had a stick that yeah. hold the door. Oh, oh the, the metal stick, the metal joint. <laughs> that don't yeah. know about that door. Yeah, that nigga, door is crazy. Lights out, put, that, put that lock on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to sleep without that lock on that door. Yeah, that, that metal ball with paws was crazy. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to break, and when we return, we will discuss the Pelicans versus the Lakers. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about was toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. So for the play in tonight, the Lakers will play the Pelicans. Underdog fantasy has LeBron James at four and a half first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower mace? Higher. Underdog is giving the money away. Um, I'm going to actually say I think he's going to have four points in the first quarter, so that's fucked up. I'm going to go 
I'm going to go higher as well. LeBron had 13 assists in the first half. I see he's trying to get his players involved before he goes crazy. So um, I'm going to go higher, though. It's a one-game situation for them. Really two, but still. Hey, Anthony Davis has 24 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower Cam? <laughs> I don't know if that nigga hurt or not. Shit, is, he, um, is he playing? He better play. LeBron gonna snatch that nigga out of his bed, pause, and try to act like he don't play. He, he can't play. I'm gonna go higher for them to win. He needs to have more than 24 points. I'm gonna go higher. Mm, I think he's gonna have lower. Okay. And Zion is at five and a half assists. Do you have him higher or lower mace? Mm, lower. I'm going to go lower too. I don't know what it is about Zion. Maybe he'll watch the film from the other day when they played against uh, the Lakers. But it just seemed like the Lakers and LeBron, for that matter, had his number. It was like when Zion was, when LeBron was drawing Zion. Zion wasn't even comfortable. It was like me looking from the television. It was almost like, damn, I'm playing against a nigga I grew up with, this whole, loving this whole year. And he's been in the league for a while, so them jitters should have been over with. But he was like pushing his arm away to get LeBron away from him. And LeBron did a great job guarding Zion, a really, really great job. Um, so I'm going to say he needs to play better this game. And maybe he went and watched some tape and see where he messed up at. I'm going to go higher. All right. And then with that, download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So as we know, this is the play-in game. What is you guys' prediction ahead of the game that will happen tonight? Well, the, well to start from where Cam just finished talking about, when it comes to Zion versus LeBron, that's the that's the matchup. And it seems like when LeBron um, first played against Zion, when Zion first came in the league, it seemed like they had no answer for Zion. Now it seemed like, like Killer said, that Zion needed to watch tape, but it seemed like LeBron has already watched his tape, and therefore he knows what he doesn't like to do. And he's and he's pushing them in that direction, and it seemed like that's what I was watching when they were playing. And when he was playing them the first year that he came into the league, LeBron wouldn't hardly even guard um, um, Zion. But now something switched, and sometimes it's like that. You're just that guy that came into the league with freak of nature, speed, or or athleticism. But people have now figured it out, and now you got to build on that game. And so Cam is absolutely right. He got to go back and watch tape. But he also got to, on the offseason, add something to his repertoire. He can't just bully niggas and jump over niggas and dunk every time. You got to actually get some other skills. Yeah, I think Mace. Zion's having – I'm sorry, Mason. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, but I think he's a phenomenal talent. I think he, he got, you know, a lot of raw athleticism. But if he adds some things to his game, like a pull-up, just different things he could add, a floater, you know, it's, it's stuff. There's a lot of stuff he could add to that game that could make him really unstoppable. Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah. Um, so who, do you, who are you picking to win the game? Lakers. I'm going with the Lakers. Anthony Davis or no Anthony Davis, I'm going with the Lakers. I ain't going with, the, with them with no Anthony Davis. Uh, I think that I'm going with the Lakers as well, assuming Anthony Davis is healthy, but I don't think it'll be the blowout that we seen um, two days ago uh, in the final game of the season. I think that C.J. McCullough, a great veteran. He knows what's at stake. Um, Brandon Ingram, that was his first game back. Maybe he gets a, a little better game. 
because it ain't all about Zion. New Orleans has a decent team. And uh, it's about what's going to happen outside of Zion as well. But it can't mm-hmm. be all Zion with the team that they have. Um, but LeBron, just going back to Sunday's game, nobody on the court, New Orleans or the Lakers, wanted it more than LeBron. You could see it in his eyes. You could see it how, how he's getting. LeBron, I believe, four steals. You know, he had a steal right before the half. He ended up missing the dunk. But it was like, bro, this man is is 39 years old, sprinting up and down the court, playing uh, tremendous defense or whoever he has to play defense on, getting players involved, scoring when he needs to score. Listen, man, I, I, it makes no sense that that man has more fire in his eyes than anybody else on that court. And I think that'll be the deciding factor um, going off if everybody's healthy, LeBron James. So I'm going with the Lakers. All right. And then moving along, kind of just going back to women's sports just for a little bit. So Serena Williams said she would be super interested in owning a WNBA team. She said with the right market, I would definitely be super interested in that. I think women's sports is having a moment that it always should have so one is that something that you could see happening and then b hypothetically speaking if you could own any team right what would it be or have ownership in any team and not even just WNBA team in general which do you think has the best value Hmm. I like soccer actually um when when I saw the um team down there in Miami with the um, pink uniforms, the pink and black with Messi, and they was inviting everybody down there. I I just thought that was a great a great um place to put soccer, and a great huh? Inner Miami. Yeah, yeah. I really I really like soccer. If I was investing in some, that's what I would invest in as a team. Yeah. Mace, what do you think about Serena Williams buying a WNBA team? That's what she asked me. She asked me, "Well, what will we and what will we do?" Right? That's what you. It was asked. a two. It was a two part question. All right. What do I think about Serena getting into women's on basketball? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure really. I I watched Michael Jordan get into going going to um look at the the Charlotte the Charlotte Hornets and I'm not sure if all athletes do well at owning teams. You know, sometimes you need that objective view. I think I think she would do great, but I'm not sure. Um you done? I ain't wanna cut you off. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Anybody want to get on the WNBA bandwagon now? Better yeah. get in. You better get in early. Better, <laughs> you better go now because Caitlin is raising the price up. So, I think it's dope that women are at a place, and especially former women athletes. I don't want to say former because maybe she'll play again, but to to a place where they have enough money to potentially um, own teams, you know. Mace is not a part of anything woman run. He's not for that. So we'll just be clear. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be clear about that. <laughs> so Damn, I would buy. I, I would buy. A, I would buy. Like, a, why are you coming at me? You said that. I didn't. I didn't say that you won. I'm just saying that you're not with nothing that women leads men in. So you could definitely nobody. You can't be a part of that if you're under Serena. So I'm just saying. <laughs> You're not into that. <laughs> you ain't, you, you, that, that ain't that ain't your thing. <laughs> I didn't say you wouldn't buy it. Like, like they say, every strong man has a woman by his side. I don't believe she's in back of him. I don't believe she's in front of him. I believe they stand side by side. 
I, I'm just going on what you said. I just, I'm just yeah, I'm not. What you, you know, the way you make it sound like I'm saying stay here. I'm not saying stay there. You right. With, with, like Jaden Kiss said, by my side, right? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm glad you clarified that because the way you made it seem. Is oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of, for, for women. I, I believe that they are great at a lot of things. I'm just right advocate here, boy. For, for, <laughs> yeah, for advocate now. Yeah, no, I'm advocate. an advocate for structure. I believe when things are built correctly, they stand longer. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want a big building that fall apart. I like to build things sturdy and build them the way they go. Order it leads to excellence. I like excellence. I like to be able what to. What does this have to do with anything? Woman excellent. being the boss. What is the structure? <laughs> if the woman is the boss. Hey Kim, structure is wild. Telling you what I know. Structure is wild. You what is I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. The other day, your exact words was, "I don't believe a woman should lead men in anything." So now let I me, understand. Let me, let me give you clarity, Cam. Yeah, no problem. Right, There's only one reason. There's only one thing a woman has to do to be a queen. You know what that is? What's that? Marry a king. That's it. That's the only way she could be a queen. All right. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people. <laughs> you like they... that, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike, look, Mike Tyson, killer. Mike Tyson. I'm just saying, a lot of people consider Stat the queen of this show, and she's not married to anybody. Thank you. You said it right. You said it right. You said it right, Killer. You said it right. You said it right. You said it right. Said a lot of people consider Stat to be the queen. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Look at that, Killer. I'm just look telling you. I'm just telling you, people like, yo, look, we had talked about this on the show a few months ago. Oh, this is like, powerful. Don't... This is powerful, Cam. I love when you do this because you put me <laughs> in my bag. You know what bag? I'm saying? No problem. Go, bag. go, killer, go. I'm just telling you, we had a whole, a whole, uh, not a debate, really defending ourselves <laughs> against that when people was like, y'all disrespecting that black queen up there. Yeah. <laughs> and everything else. So I'm just saying we don't really have kings and queens in America. So when you're referring to marrying a king, that doesn't really go for this country. So <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying, but that, that's like in, that's 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 England and London and all that. So you can marry you can marry anybody you want out here in America. You'll never be a technically a real queen. <laughs> so Ooh. you're considered a queen. <laughs> That's all I was saying. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> keep going, Gil. I like oh, no, 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 it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, I, I'm done. I look, I'm just saying what you said. I, I would just repeat what you said. <laughs> That from now on, that's all. I, I heard a lady say this. I heard a lady say this. I heard women say this often on the internet. They said that the um the black woman is the most unprotected woman there is. They said there's nobody more unprotected than a black woman, and that's the terminology that I'm speaking up for. If you put her out front and you put her where she's out front, she's not going to be protected because she's in front of her protection. She got to be with her protection to be protected. If you run out in front of your blockers, nobody can block for you. So society sets up this terminology to make a person feel like a boss only to put them somewhere where they're not protected. So they end up with the money, but they don't end up with the other pieces that go along with making them whole. And the purpose of a woman is to be whole. But thank Did you. you. Give me Did you give me an example of what you're talking about? Because it just sounds like a bunch of spinning. I don't really understand yeah, okay. what you give me. Okay, you so, give me example. So, so, give me example. I'm, I'm yeah. here to learn. 
Give me an example so what you're talking out, about. She goes out, she becomes this phenomenal businesswoman, right? She's mm -hmm. making a bunch of money. <laughs> but she, but when she finds herself trying to do certain things, she feels like people are taking advantage of her. She's not, or in some cases, physically unprotected, um, emotionally unprotected, all of, all of the other ways other than financial, because that's not the, the way she's supposed to be set up. You know, the way she's supposed to be set up is where everything is good, not just her money, her emotions are well, her mental as well, her physical as well. And that only happens when she's like in her purpose, like her purpose allows her to get the greatness that's put in her. Without her purpose, she's just existing. What's a woman's purpose there? Mm, thank you, Killer. Now you're going. Yeah, going yeah, like, yeah. I want to hear this. I want, <laughs> okay, what's, what's the purpose? Her real, her real purpose. Oh, this is this is gonna be phenomenal. I, I need an hour for this, Kim. I can't just do this. Yeah, say time. it. Go ahead and say but, it. I want to hear it. What's the woman's purpose? I want to hear it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. A woman's real purpose is to help her family become everything the legacy of her family is to be. So she's supposed to nurture her children. She's supposed to raise her help raise her children, help cultivate her children, help um, help them to be what the identity for the children is and to ultimately be there with the man to help them create the family that's supposed to be because when the family does well, money is not a problem. Money is just a problem when the family doesn't work out. So you'll find poverty where you find families that are broken where families are, are a whole, poverty doesn't exist. So you take the man out of the equation. That's why she feels like she has to get money. That's why everybody's number one focus is the money because the family is broken. Where the family is not broken, money is one of the last things that people think about. I ain't jacking that, bro. It's families just together that's broke and it's couples that ain't together that's rich. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? And yo, bro, that didn't even make no sense. Yo, bro. So if you're together, if, if you're married and have a good family. You saw you, Nick's face when I was money. saying this? You got to have, have money if you're together. But if you're broken up, you don't have money. That's what you're saying? I don't get it. No, that. no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying where there's, where you'll find poverty at its highest is where families are broken. Where you find people that are sometimes the richest are mainly where families are whole. Like you take some of the billionaires out there, they're mainly people that are married to their high school sweetheart. They're not baddies. They're like this regular old lady. I mean, I mean, you know a lot of rich people. Just ask them how their wife look or tell them, hey, I want to meet you and your so family. So if you rich, if you rich, your wife ain't bad because if, if you no, got no. her from high school. No, I'm just saying that the, I'm saying we keep we I'm trying to give you the the the, the logistics <laughs> around what I we're talking right. about. I'm, so really, in, I'm really trying to learn. That's why I'm listening. Yeah, yeah so I'm in, listening. A, in a in a in a black community, right? So because that's what we're talking about. Because we we brought up stat in the in the area where she is, and in such such women like she come from a family. If you asked her about a family. Um, they weren't impoverished, but they weren't impoverished because she got a dad there. She got a mom there and not just they're there together, but they're working together. If they're not working together, then poverty is going to be present. That's that's the that's the reaction to that brokenness. So when you got people running like young ladies running after getting money they most times don't end up with the money. They end up more broken because whatever the money they get, they end up having to use that to repair their brokenness, if that makes sense. Does that make but sense? What about, what, what it actually, about? It actually does. It actually does. But when you make statements too, it's interesting because I think Cam's also asking questions that people may have when they hear you say certain things. So it's, 
the back and forth. Yeah, that's why I said I need more time. That's why I said I would need more time to really the the answer everything. But the gist of it, the gist of it is what about. And Nick, when I say these names, could you beep the names out, please? Because I want to ask okay, them a question. So, what about what about But that's 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 what I'm talking about. That's not what I mean about being together. The people that stay together. And toxicity is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like Stat and her her dad and her mom, like that that love that they have for each other, it causes them to create an environment where they figure out their problems. They don't destroy each other to get what they get. So in, in that other equation that you was asking, Killer, they destroy each other to get what they get. That's where you get child support from them. that's where you get all of that where people are destroying the other person to get what they get and um even with child support a child always does better in a house where both of their parents are there because if you ask a child do you want to go with the dad or the mom they'll always say i want both of my parents i don't want to have to choose which one i don't want to decide if i go here for christmas or there for thanksgiving i want us all to be together but you know, like that. I, 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 I didn't grow up like that, so I, it's different for me. So I dig what you're saying, but to me, my personal opinion on what you're saying is that <laughs> you installed this in certain people, and you gotta back it up. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just saying. I think this been told to people before. <laughs> and you gotta stand on what you say. Because if you don't, niggas will be like, murder six <laughs> years ago, you ain't say this, man. <laughs> this, this, nah, this what I, think. I mean, even when you, even in the hood, right? What they used to say, they used to say, because they didn't understand what I was saying, they would say, it's cheaper than keeper. You ever heard that? Absolutely, yeah. So in that understanding, they understand that, they understood that as a child, like being in a mix of that, if you break up their salary, like if you had to pay for two homes versus one house, it, it helps the child to get more from the parents. And once you break it up and they go their separate ways, the child is actually living off half of what the family got, which puts them in a terrible position and keeps the negative cycle going over and over again. But that's what I, I said. You, I, need an hour. I need an hour. I think I think you made some terrific points. I think that what you said made a lot of sense, but I don't think that's for every family You're in right. America. And I and I don't think that that um that um you have to be you're gonna be successful just from that format. But I do think you're correct in what you're saying, and I understood your point 100%. I just think it's different scenarios for different people. Because at the end of the day, look, I didn't grow up with my father, but I, you know, for a time, I stayed with my grandparents. So mm -hmm. I had a, a male figure in the house, and Mace, uh, I know you had a stepfather in the house as well. And I don't think neither one of them niggas helped us become who we are today. So, I think we figured that out outside. I'm not going to speak for you, me personally. No, you're right. I, yeah, you're right. You're right. I like Luck. Luck is my nigga, though. That was my, I fuck with that nigga. That was my man. My grandfather was cool, too, but nah, I tell nigga, I want to do the album. I'm out my damn mind. Niggas wasn't supporting. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really see it. So, But you made some great points, and I'm happy that you cleared that up because people may have looked at what you said the other day differently so you you explain that very well back to serena williams real quick so we can move on um i think it's dope um she comes from a two-parent home as well um great structure in her house and it probably did make her become the woman woman that she is today so that was a great um it's great the way you broke that down so um i think it's dope and if i had to pick a team that i own me personally uh, Mason is right. Them soccer teams make a lot of bread. Not in America, the ones overseas. 
you know, Madrid, all that, all the soccer teams over there make more money than uh, American sports. But if I'm going to pick a team that I can own, I'm going to the top of the food chain. It's either going to be the Dallas Cowboys or the Yankees. I don't got time <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> The Cowboys are worth nine billion dollars. They're the <laughs> highest paid franchise in football. I don't got time to rebuild and figure it out. So um they, they probably sell the most merch too. Because I when I look, said something, I was thinking about merch as well. Well, you know, all that's included. You're not gonna just make yeah. that off ticket sales. I'm looking, I'm, i pulled it up real quick and I'll just give you the top, the top. Five teams, four teams real quick. It's the Dallas Cowboys, number one. The New York Yankees, number two. Golden State Warriors, number three. And New England Patriots, are number four. So, uh, wow. yeah, give me the title. Golden State, number three? That's that's good. You, you cut them off, Nick? No, but Golden State being at number three is super dope. But I mean, I think I think this means that's all the time that we have for today. Um, Y'all do Cam off. <laughs> Cam, you wildin'. I had to kick you out. Don't come back here with that ever again. <laughs> now nah, I see you tomorrow, killer. Right. Okay. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for watching. And as always, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, two big Macs, like when they doing them two for five.